Good afternoon. I'm happy to welcome all of you here to Roosevelt Hospital, which is part of the Continuum Health Partners system here in New York. For marketing purposes, we're calling ourselves the Continuum Hospitals of New York to give you a little more clarity. You're, standing, you're sitting here in Roosevelt Hospital, which was uh, founded by a, a relative of Theodore Roosevelt. So it's that line of, of the Roosevelt family, just a point of reference. Uh, Mr. James Roosevelt, and James Roosevelt was an innovator in his own way, so it's uh, um, uh, apropos for us to host this conference here. The first uh, privately sponsored ambulance in the city of New York was sponsored by Mr. Roosevelt out of this facility over 150 years ago. And uh, another point of reference, Mr. Roosevelt loved this hospital so much that he is actually buried here. If you go outside on, on the lunch break, in the park in front of the hospital is a tombstone for Mr. Roosevelt, and he's been buried here for the past 120 some odd years. Also, uh, for points of reference, so um, the continuum was formed 15 years ago. It comprises Beth Israel Medical Center, which is uh, the largest of all of our hospitals, a, a teaching hospital on 16th Street and 1st Avenue. Beth Israel in Brooklyn is a, um, a almost 300 bed hospital located right in the center of Brooklyn. You're here in Roosevelt Hospital. The St. Luke's Hospital uh, is up on 114th Street near the Columbia University. And then our specialty hospital, the New York Eye and Ear Infirmary. And when you look around, these are our facilities. And just to give you um, a little bit of groundwork on the breadth and scope of what the Continuum Hospitals comprise. And um, some fast facts, it's a huge place. So $2.8 billion operating organization. Um, we are the sixth largest private employer and uh, a host of other sta uh, stats. Um, each hospital maintains their own um, staff of physicians, of, of employees, and um, the continuum serves as the umbrella organization that marries all of us together and operates us as a system. And my areas of responsibility in external affairs are marketing, PR, government and community affairs, and also fundraising. So uh, the administrative staff oversees all of the functions that would normally be in any of these traditional external affairs, and then coordinates with uh, the physicians and staff at each of the sites. So it serves, in effect, as the umbrella organization. So where we began. Um, what I'm talking to you uh, today about is our baby steps into social media. I think like I uh, looked at the list to see who was going to be in attendance and tried to tailor my remarks to many of you. Some of you are uh, far advanced, like Ed and Lee. And many of you, I think, are probably um, you know, taking baby steps too, just like we are. And those of you who work for agencies, the people who hire you <laughs> are probably going to be uh, folks like us who are taking baby steps. We work in um, a very traditional setting. As, as many of you do. And so we wanted to broach this uh, slowly and surely and make sure that we did things the right way for our physicians and also for our colleagues. So when we first started, so now you know this is several years ago, we were looking at four different areas of consideration. The ownership um, between us and IT, uh, we were going to be staffing content of course, but uh, all the other people who were going to be involved needed to have a seat at the table early on. And then who was actually going to do a lot of the work. And then um, as uh, Ed talked about, the buy-in from senior leadership again in a, a, rel a very traditional uh, setting as ours is. Uh, these were things for us to look at. And then of course legal because we um, Everything we do in public affairs and everything we do in marketing, we have a very um, uh, close relationship with our colleagues in the legal department. <laughs> and we find them to be incredibly, incredibly helpful, um, but we make sure we always bring them in at the earliest stages. So as you know, social media crosses many boundaries. I do think it's very helpful to have one executive who's in charge of all of these different external affairs areas because, of course, um, as in Mayo, maybe it starts in media relations, but um, it very soon took on mega implications for our marketing groups uh, and also um, for our fundraising. In fundraising, um, 
we still have a very long way to go in terms of utilizing social media, but I wanted to make sure that they were there very early on. And of course, for a very large uh, number of paid employees and physicians, internal communications is critical as well. So we decided that we were going to bring everyone, for, these are just my people sitting around a table to figure out how we were going to move forward. We divided up the social, we created the social media committee. The other thing that we did is that we, um, we did not hire a dedicated staff person to be in charge of this. Um, my experience with web development over the years is that you can hire these people and then um, um, they get involved in doing so many other things that that's not really just their job anymore and everybody else needs to be involved as well. I also thought for um, opportunities for our own staff to learn more and for career development for them. We wanted to have a very broad umbrella of number of people who were going to be involved. So we did the first things that many of you, I guess, have been doing or will do, and that is establish the official pages, you know, again, baby steps, and um, work with some, we had a couple of departments who had their own pages. Um, but you know, the survey that uh, we found, of course, is uh, like so many, uh, of our colleagues. They love the idea of it, but then to keep it updated and um, uh, instead of just posting one's CV and expecting everyone to read through all 52 pages of it, um, we, 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 um, we found a number of those and we, we wanted to address them early on. And then how to um, create content that would be meaningful and interesting to our patients, but also how to uh, improve engagement among our colleagues, but also our, the patients we were trying to reach. So um, in our staff, we have about, uh, I think we have nine staff in, in marketing overall. So we're not a one-man band, but we're also not the Mayo Clinic either in terms of um, overall staff, but uh, in terms of knowledge. You know, our folks, had, we all had a lot to learn, and we were, uh, again, not um, a one-man show, but uh, uh, we didn't feel we were robust enough to do it all on our own. Again, for retention purposes and for, um, our own engagement and development of our staff, I wanted everyone to have a piece of this. And, and early on, I was um, censured by a colleague of mine, I'm 47, and this gal who's a little older than me, and said, please stop referencing it. Is this for something for the new people or the young kids or the young people to work on? We all have to work on this, and it's important to all of us. So uh, I learned very early on to uh, make sure that we opened it up to everybody and stop referencing um, the young people on the staff as the social media uh, types. Although I do rely on them for everything that I need personally with my iPhone and my iPad and the other things that I don't know how to work well enough. So we still struggle with manpower issues, you know, some four years later, but um, how we divided the labor, and again, this is real step-by-step uh, -step to help hopefully give you some ideas of how you can structure things. We have designated staff per pages, and um, we make sure we pick the right people who become um, content experts. The way we have our staff divided up in public affairs and marketing is by subject matter because we're covering a number of different hospitals. So we have somebody who does cardiology, somebody who does cancer, as opposed to site specific, someone who does Roosevelt Hospital, someone who does Beth Israel. This way we make sure that we're not competing against ourselves for things that we're going to be posting or things we're pitching to the media or people we're trying to raise money from. So the, the, the dashboard software helps us keep track of all the postings and the things that we want to do. And also, as I said, we, um, my staff is here to um, attend this conference. They've gone to many other conferences, and I'll share some of those with you later in the presentation as well. Um, but we, we wanted to increase our own knowledge and also um, focus on areas that we thought had great potential for us. So we did an RFP, just like you might do for any other agency that you, were, you would hire. We um, d uh, received three competitive bids. We met with the agencies, and actually Bunny Ellerin helped us uh, tremendously in sorting through those so that we could make sure we were comparing apples and apples and, and help move to the next step. That was very helpful and something I, I would recommend to many other, to all of you. Then the senior, senior leadership buy-in. Nobody here at uh, Continuum or any of our hospitals uh, said, I don't believe in Facebook. I don't, they, they, it just wasn't on their radar screen. So we did not have any pushback on um, what our content would be, um, but we had concern about the legal issues. And so as I said, um, 
the next step right away in our early discussions was to bring legal in. Um, from legal, I will say, remember this is 2008, it's new to me too, but our lawyers are not working in the same venues that we all are. So I would say it took us about a solid year of working together with the legal department to um, make sure that all of our bases were covered. They were particularly interested in HR issues, uh, to, to this gal's point from um, partners. Um, not in terms of recruitment, but in terms of uh, what the rules should be for our employees in terms of what they are able to post, what, how much access they would have, and I will tell you we still don't have um, access for everybody in our organization to uh, the internet at all, let alone Facebook and other areas. And it's something that we just, when we had our social media uh, committee um, uh, several weeks ago, we brought that back up to the forefront because um, there are so many ways that we need to communicate, try to communicate better with our own employees, and we're just not using all the um, opportunities we might. And blocking people, listen, this is a management issue. People have their own phones. It's up to their managers to monitor what they're doing when they're at their desks all day long. Uh, this is uh, an issue, and I have more ammunition, thanks to the, those who uh, started the presentations this morning, because it's something we need to change, and, I, and I'm reinvigorated in my efforts uh, based on, thank you. <laughs> I should have, uh, yeah, and um, I will say that the biggest issue is, I think, um, more from IT worrying that, you know, something interesting will happen on, and then all of a sudden they'll, um, all of our 17,000 employees will log on to Facebook and bring our system down or something. So we'll, ha we'll, we'll address those issues, and um, uh, to wrap up legal, don't, don't underestimate how long the process takes. They have a very valid point of view. If something goes wrong, they're going to, with your policy, they're the ones who are going to have to defend it. Um, so I always make sure I try to be as respectful of, of, of their needs as, as possible, and I think that they try to do the same for us. So our, our media presence, our social media presence today is that our, our three largest hospital health, hospitals have their own Facebook and YouTube profiles. We make sure that everything we do in external affairs is repurposed and, and very purposeful for every, any type of media possible. Um, select departments, um, as, as Ed was talking about earlier, select departments have their own Facebook pages. Um, we're not worried about people posting things inappropriately. What we're worried about is people not posting, <laughs> setting up their page, and then it becomes lax, and then you log on, and you see a posting or a press release from theirs from four years ago. Now, would you go to a doctor who, who um, has not updated their page that they know that their patient's going to be looking at? Um, and I, I, I can't think of one department that doesn't underestimate the amount of attention that goes into this. But, I mean, you guys work with this all the time. And they say, oh, my son can do it, my daughter can do it. You know what, at the end of the day, it's the responsibility of our departments to make sure that this presence is up to date. So while we don't want to handcuff anybody and thwart creativity, uh, we do want to make sure that they're doing things in appropriate fashion. Again, not inappropriate content, just not enough of it, and not timely. Uh, we have a new healthcare initiative with uh, media partners here in New York, NBC, channel that's our Channel 4, uh, NBC affiliate here, and the New York Daily News. We still have um, uh, two tabloid dailies in New York. Um, you see the, uh, I love the layoff slide on uh, newspapers, but they're still important to us in, in New York. And uh, this new health initiative is focusing on com uh, community health education, awareness. It's a three-year long um, program together with our media partners. And uh, we have a Facebook and a Twitter presence in both of these areas. Again, much more to do. These are the basics. This is where we are today. And we have a lot more uh, underway. Um, what we decided to do uh, with 32 clinical departments in three different hospitals, um, we thought among ourselves in the external affairs social media group, where do we have the most potential to drive and ha have an incredible, have a great presence and drive a conversation in social media? And we spent a lot of time talking about it and then weighing that against pro programs here in the organization that are important to us. So exercise, health topics, all the things that are some of the more popular searches and um, more popular bloggers are important, but um, two programs that, also, that we identified that also um, there's a lot of social media presence around were uh, diabetes and um, 
mental health issues. Um, and so again, we're the um, convener of, of uh, many children in a, fam a large family. We chose one, from Beth one program from Beth Israel and one program from St. Luke's Roosevelt to get us started. I think particularly with diabetes, I'm most enthusiastic about what we may be able to do with our Friedman Diabetes Institute. Uh, because we have, um, in, in our program, we have about 8,000 patients. Um, you all know for cr uh, chronic disease like, like diabetes, these patients come in a lot. They get to know each other well. They get to know their providers well. And there are always things happening in diabetes, new treatment modalities. There's a conversation to be had there. We have experts in this department who I think can really have a presence here. And they just need some support from us in making it happen. Um, I hope in future, we just started this work, I would say, mm, three or four months ago in earnest. So I hope at a future conference I'll come back to you and tell you that um, we've had fabulous success, not only in the social media presence, but in changing the lives of some of our patients who are relying on us for treatment of their chronic illness. Um, the blog, we've been talking about a blog for a very long time. In fact, we had a CEO at one of our hospitals at one time who started, well, you'll appreciate this story. So one, one Monday morning, I walked in uh, to work, and I had a call from my uh, boss who runs the entire organization to hear that um, one of our, the presidents of one of our hospitals had decided to start a blog the day before that his son set up for him. <laughs> um, you know, one of those online things that uh, he, he purchased. And... Um, so, you know, we want to be open to all things. This is about three years ago. And um, sure enough, by day three of the blog, there was no new content. Three or four or five, six more days go by, can we help you? You know, we don't want to be ghost writers because this fellow was a doctor. We want, you know what happened to the blog without enough coordination with us. So we just took a step back. We said, let's look at blogs. We want to have a presence, but we want to make sure that we do things the right way. And... Um, spent the past, I'd say, six to eight months talking about it and working on it. So this summer, we're going to launch our first multi-author hospital blog. Um, we are focused in on things. We've done a lot of research about what are the things that people are looking for on Twitter and on Facebook and health issues, matching up the appropriate um, uh, experts that we have, not just physicians. Um, every allied health professional who can be helpful to us will be included in this as we move ahead. Um, we tried to gain a lot of uh, attention internally, so we had a naming contest throughout the hospitals. Uh, we promoted it in all of our newsletters, and we had hundreds of uh, responses. And we narrowed it down to, um, I think we voted on three or four of them. We, we made the executive decision in the external affairs department and um, awarded uh, the uh, winner with a prize that I don't recall. I think it was a we, but I'll have to check. And then, um, interestingly enough, we got enough content to fill the first two months, and people actually wrote to us in things that we could use. Very little editing believe it or not, from our colleagues. No one sent their CV and asked us to post it. <laughs> and, and here's what it will look like. It's going to be called Health Bites. In fact, we ha I think we had two or three people who um, suggested Health Bites. Uh, we're still working on um, um, some of the details about it, but uh, we're focusing on um, general health information. Our tagline is um, at Beth Israel is where health and healing come together, and so we will tie uh, the early part of the conversation to this to this theme. So I look forward to um, sharing health bites with you sometime over uh, uh, the summer months. Um, in order to get people ready for this, we have um, extent, a, a policy that everyone can access, of course, on our intranet and in, uh, internet through HR, all of the things that you might expect. But we also want it to be more socially friendly to them as well. So um, our colleagues on the social media committee put together a social media toolkit and, um, you know, kept it very high level and just gave them some 
simple ideas of how um, it might be appropriate for them to uh, post items. We're still finalizing this as, as we uh, move forward, but I think that uh, by keeping it light and not making it onerous, you know, 140 words, you know, as we all know, sometimes it's easier to write 800 words than it is 140 that have meaning. Uh, so however our staff can be helpful to them, uh, we will, but I will tell you, I've been very impressed by what I've seen from our colleagues in, in the early stages and the early uh, submissions. Um, the most important thing with having the outside agencies on these two pilot projects, I would say, is not only the success we expect, but also um, our staff, so these eight people in, in, in marketing and then the media relations people and the internal communications folks are all learning so much from this outside agency. Um, we're all taking everything that we do for the Diabetes Institute and for behavioral health and um, thinking about all the things that you can use these tools for for all of the other clinical areas that, um, that, you work, that we work on. Again, um, none of these things to execute are expensive in their own right. However, the manpower behind them is where your expense comes in. Um, I, but for us, um, as I said, I think it's important for everybody in the staff to have um, basic knowledge. And um, what we're finding is, of course, this is fun stuff to work on. So everyone uh, in our, among our staff, people are embracing it at, at every level, from the coordinator to the directors, and enjoying themselves with it and um, take, trying to take every advantage we can of all of these new tools. Uh, we're looking at um, some of these platforms which were new, uh, particularly to me, but also to uh, a number of, uh, of others. And then um, looking for ways to build partnerships to link our social media, um, as I'm sure all of you are doing. Uh, again, with us, baby steps, making sure that we do things correctly. We're taking the precious time of our clinical partners to work with us on this. We want to make sure we're advising them the right way. We want them to have good experiences. We want the, um, um, them to feel enthusiastic about it and not that it's a chore. And uh, so far, we've had great success with these steps. So what have we learned? Um, like everything in a large organization, you need some structure. Again, you don't want to thwart the creativity in any of the clinical departments, but you need to have someone in charge, someone looking over it, someone advising them on what is appropriate and how to make things happen. Um, the application process for us has worked well. Um, who has two months? Two, do you have two months, Ed, that you have people, um, before they can get there on site, two months? We do one month. Um, and, um, you know, we know when they start if they're going to make the one month or not. Um, <laughs> you know, you all know your colleagues, right? So, um, but, um, and we didn't think that one month was too onerous. Um, and um, I think we'll stay with that. But uh, uh, at least there's some process here because of, um, of course, every department uh, has great pride, and they all think that they should have their own site that doesn't need to be linked to uh, anything else because of the unique nature of what they do. Um, but uh, um, again, we're not worried about inappropriate content. We're worried about timely content. And um, this has helped us tremendously. And then also, as I said, our staff comes to conferences like this. We spend the time and money. For, there's a lot of stuff happening in New York, as Bunny noted. Uh, more and more conferences like this are being held here. Not, um, you know, when we first started, everyone had to go out to the West Coast or go to Rochester to hear what uh, was happening. Now we have so much here in New York. So at all levels of the organization, in my staff, um, a lot of conferences, they keep notes because sometimes there are valid things that some of you may be doing in your places that just don't work for us for a host of reasons. We go back to it every three, four months, uh, every quarterly to see what someone else may have learned in a conference that they attended and see what, um, if, if a new application can work for us. Um, you know, blogs from the OR, for example, are, are something that were very hot early on. Um, we've done a uh, uh, we did for many years, we did something called OR Live, where we um, did sur broadcast surgeries live from the operating room. When we first did it, I don't know, Terry, how many years ago this is, maybe five, I thought, oh my God, who would want to watch these things, especially potential patients, you know, and 
Can I tell you? It's been one of the most successful things that we've ever done. The interests of people who are going to be undergoing these procedures, um, they're so educated now, and they're very not queasy about watching this stuff. All of this has been incredible for us. We've been able to repurpose those OR Live broadcasts um, uh, to an astronomical number. Of everything that we've done, you can, I, uh, we've done every type of surgery known to uh, a large teaching hospital like ours. The most um, widely viewed was um, myomectomy, by the way, fibroid tumor surgery. Just FYI, it was one of the most, uh, I guess because the, it's so common, um, it was the most successful surgery uh, that we've ever did on a live broadcast, point of reference. We have 17,000 employees. Internal promotion is, uh, is essential. And so then, of course, it just rescores the point, underscores the point that your employees have to be able to log on to actually see what you're doing. Um, but internal promotion um, for all of our programs, Live Well New York uh, site, the, the the, um, the site and the Twitter account. We produce this to our employees all the time, reinforcing it time and again. Um, so many people in the hospital are not able to sit at, uh, even though they have handhelds and we have um, almost, we're very close to a complete electronic record. Um, you still need to, uh, for what we found is that you still need to do some of the old-fashioned stuff, like do flyers and print out um, things that uh, people can pick up um, at the nurses' station and at where they meet for their coffee. So we do everything electronically. Also, we limit what we send to people in their homes, but we do we still continue to do some of um, um, the old-fashioned stuff of just making sure we have posters and flyers and and and. Um, things that go together with people when they get paid or where they get their coffee so that they have access to this information. And as I noted, we, we took baby steps. It took us several years to get to where we are now. I would say one of the things that helped us um, from going very slowly to really speeding it up was hiring an outside agency. It was not that expensive, and it brought us a lot of uh, new ideas for things that are important to us in those two areas I mentioned, diabetes and mental health, but also our staff has learned so much from this agency and has really been very helpful to us in moving the whole social media agenda forward. Um, the, uh, you know, I, I am not, uh, the nature of my job, I'm not thinking about social media. Um, all day long, the staff um, in marketing in particular, but also in media relations are working on it. But I try to make sure that my colleagues who run our hospitals know what we're doing, try to keep them involved and engaged. And when we have a success or, you know, we, we try to make sure we're our own biggest internal cheerleader so that the um, physician leadership in particular knows what we're doing, that they're um, uh, excited about it. And even if they don't follow Twitter or they don't want anyone to ever see them on Facebook, they understand it's something positive and that they are happy that their organization is involved in it. Um, there, there's a lot of conferences that we've attended. This one, um, my colleague Terry Cavanaugh uh, went to uh, Minnesota and uh, found it incredibly valuable. And there are a number of others that we've attended over the past year, I think, that um, are, are worthy of consideration. Uh, in social media, it's still new enough, I think, that you'll always find something new. And uh, particularly the, those that Bunny has been engaged in, I think, have been uh, remarkably helpful to our staff. And then our social media properties, I just have a list here. Again, you'll get the presentations. But if you want to see uh, what we're doing, our Twitter accounts, our YouTubes, our Facebooks, um, all of these things that we um, do regular postings to, there's always something new. Um, we try to spend as much time looking at what all of you are doing and um, get ideas from all of you. And I hope you'll do the same uh, for us. Um, happy. I'm going to stay around through the next presentation, and any questions that any of you have, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you again, and welcome to Roosevelt. We're happy to have you. <laughs>